And I'm going to go through how to use Gubric. It's an amazing tool, uh, and it's a rubric that you can attach to these documents and send um, automated, uh, just like I sent um, these last comments and grades through an email. Uh, Andrew Stillman is the creator of Doctopus and um, Gubric, and it's just an amazing tool uh, for teachers to use. So you're going to go back to the Doctopus label here that is installed still. I'm back in my um, roster for period one science fair proposals. I'm going to slide down to attach Gubric, and it's going to run the script. Now I don't have Gubric installed yet, uh, so I need to go there. In step one, install the Gubric Chrome extension if you haven't already. So it will take me to the Chrome store and I just need to add Gubric and you can read about it uh, and its capabilities um, and I'm going to add it to Chrome and click add. Now you can see it's added this icon up into my top uh, URL bar there um, and that's how I can manage it from that spot. All right, so I'm going to close this out and get out of the shopping and close out. So back to attach a Gubric. Now I do have to authorize the Gubric web app, so I do have to go through step two as well. When I get the OK, I'm all set to use it. And I'm ready to go. Now I'm in step three. I'm going to select a rubric for this Doctopus assignment. Um, it has to be, it gives the rules for it. It has to be created in the top sheet of a spreadsheet. I uh, use a numeric score for the headers starting in column two. And I'll show, um, I did all of that in my um, rubric. So I'm going to select a rubric and it's going to pull up um, my spreadsheets that I have available. And there's the one I made for this. So I will select that one. And I'm going to attach this rubric uh, to this assignment at the bottom here. Okay, so now it's displaying um, the rubric, and you can see that my um, sheet has changed. First of all, here are um, the first page of it, whereas my first responses to it. Now here are my rubric scores, and across here it has the um, all of the points that I were was using, the problem, the research, hypothesis. These were all a part of my rubric, and then again comments I'll be adding in. We can go ahead and get started grading. So I'm going to go back to the first sheet on my spreadsheet where the assignments are. Now, I'm going to go down to the one I'm using as a sample, my own. I'm going to click on the assignment that I've created. And once it opens up, this is when I come up to my URL bar up top, and I will click on the icon for Gubric. And it's looking for the associated Gubric for this assignment. It's connecting. and. This is amazing. Look at this. It opens up my entire rubric. Now I can click in any of these fields. I can look through the assignment and be uh, using this um, uh, to grade as I go. So as I go through here, I can look at um, what I'm considering four, three, two, and one, and I can fill it in. And let's say I'm just going to go quickly through here and fill it in. It will then highlight the part that I've uh, created. Oh, let's see. I'm just going to go materials. Uh, there we go, and procedure is a two. So I can also come down and put some comments. Uh, this looks great start. All right, so these comments will go to the student. I can leave this checked email rubric score to the student, and I can also submit and paste to doc. So once I do this, you can see the script is running again. You have to be careful when you're filling this in. Do not click away from your rubric when you're in the middle of it. Otherwise, you have to run it again, and you could lose all of your comments that you've typed in below. So once you start writing in this um, rubric, be sure not to click away onto the document or somewhere else. This disappears. If it does, just click the icon again and uh, you'll be able to um, run it. Now it's saying proceed to the next document.
So let's come back to uh, this and see down below. Oh, it's all in red. Down below, it has now attached my rubric, probably because my last writing was in red, but it's now attached the rubric and the score I've given to each of them. And at the very bottom of the rubric, it says a comment. Now, if I go into uh, my email, let's see what window I have here. There we go. Uh, and you can see an assignment, an uh, email has been sent to me as well, rubric assessment submitted. And I get a copy of the rubric with the grade and the comments. Now I could have written in there, please submit for another grading. Let's go back and look and see what my spreadsheet is looking like. Oops, this is my uh, original rubric I created, which I'll use that probably. Again, now I'm going to go back into form responses and let's look. So here's my column for uh, what I've just done. And you can see it's included all of the grades that I've um, just typed into that, uh, into that Gubrick. It's put it right into the spreadsheet now. It also has what says what's called count. This is how many times that I've gone in and corrected it or graded it over again. If I want to go back in and recreate a, a student's um, work, I can just go back to their work, um, slide into my um, roster here, and click on the link for their work. And once I'm in here and I want to regrade it, I'm going to go back up into um, the toolbar here and click on my Gubrick icon again, and it's going to look for the associated uh, rubric. Um, and now remember it saved it the last time because I at the end when I was all done I, I clicked submit and paste to the doc so it did save it. So as I go through and I can check to see if the student has um, completed this um, a little bit better I can just go in and um, change the scores. Um, let's see the procedure we'll say that's a three um, and we're good. And I can write in another comment. Uh, All right, and submit and paste to the, I maybe don't, you don't need to do an email again, but you can submit and paste it to um, the document again. It's fine if you want to email students. Now it says proceed to the next document. I can go into the document that I just regraded, and you'll see that another rubric is posted down below, and it's time stamped. Uh, and date stamp so the student can keep track of their new grades. Um, you did much better. So uh, back onto the roster and you can see where you've uh, collected your scores here. Um, you can slide across the section that is uh, for the one I was just working on and as it goes through you can see that uh, it has changed the grades and it also says uh, that it has it's the second time that this has been graded. So this is how you use Gubrick along with Doctopus. An incredible time saver and a great way to give feedback to your students on their work, which is one of the best ways for their improvement. I hope this has helped, and I encourage you to take the step and try the Doctopus.